What up guys, it's the Fighting Therapist here, and for today's video, we're gonna talk about plantar fasciitis. Now before we jump into the video, guys, please don't forget to click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, give this video a like. Now, to jump to today's video, plantar fasciitis. What is it, how does it happen, how do you treat it, just everything to know about it. What is the plantar fascia? So pretty much plantar fascia, beautiful artistic skills that you guys know I, I, I don't uh, have at all. It's really upside down, isn't it? All right, can, can we do it like this way? This make more sense for you guys? Not really, I'm gonna have to flip it on screen, which is pretty much the bottom of your foot. So like, this is, you know, your tibia, your fibula, your calcaneus, you got your navicular, your cuboids, your cuneiform, metatarsals. So right on the medial calcaneus, that's where it starts, and it's gonna go all the way to the transverse ligament of your metatarsals. Don't worry about like where it goes, just understand that it runs at the bottom of your foot, okay? So usually what happens is the inflammation will occur closer to the origin, and pretty much the plantar fascia is just a thick fibrous tissue, usually we call it an aponeurosis, and you also have it on your hand, so when you have like a flat musculature, instead of a ligament being there, we call it an aponeurosis, which is like a thick fibrous tissue. It's white in color, and it kind of looks like a massive spider web. Pretty much, think of Spider-Man like Spider-Man. So they have like that huge like web-like thing that takes like those very wide um, surface areas, and it covers that whole place. Instabilities in the foot due to wearing very compressed shoes, right? I'm gonna show you guys the difference right now. A lot of the times we take the conventional shoe, right? The running shoe, it, Nike, Reebok, whatever it is. They're, you know, some are more bendable than others, some are more minimalist than others. The problem with a lot of these shoes is that, as you guys can see the angle at the edge of the foot, if this was your big toe, it's not really able to spread out as naturally as possible. And when you grow up, when you're a kid, or if you guys could just picture like your little cousins running around, they actually have some very spread out natural toes, nice in the form that they're actually supposed to be. Whereas if you were to switch to like a barefoot shoe, which I'm actually sponsored by an affiliate with um, Zero Shoes. So these are one of their pairs. So you guys can see the difference between the toe box. There, it's not compressed inwards. And if we look at the difference between the two shoes, you can see that big toe kind of coming in where this one has that wider toe box. And it allows me to use the, articula the articulature of my bones normally in my shoe without compressing everything and pretty much doing this to my foot. If you think about your plantar fascia, which is right here, if we're just gonna be squeezing it from football cleats, soccer cleats, rugby cleats, shoes on a day-to-day -day basis, and we're not really releasing those tension spots, we're not massaging the area, we're not strengthening the area, well, what's gonna happen is two things, which is gonna be another in another separate video. You're gonna get bunions, okay? I have one, I'm posting video on my channel about that, but you're gonna get a lot of plantar fasciitis talk, like it could happen, some people won't, some people will. Majority of the time, if you put a ball and try to deep tissue that shit, it's gonna hurt like crazy. I remember in my school degree, we did it. My friend Alex was actually, we're learning how to release it on each other and I was sweating like crazy that I had to take every single layer of clothes off me besides my underwear. Like I was sweating like crazy just for my foot because of how bad it was. That's when I started switching to more barefoot shoes and I've actually been wearing Zero Shoes and all the other brands, but now I'm, I honestly love these so much more. And this video wasn't made to like make a video for them, but allowing the natural spring that you actually have in your foot and allowing the normal splaying action to happen with your toes, you're gonna get a lot better contractions up that posterior chain with your glutes, with your big toe, releasing that plantar fascia and allowing it to relax. If we're gonna compress all of this tissue down here, we're gonna get inflammation and we're gonna get a lot of pain later and we're gonna get a lot of other complication and secondary injuries that are gonna occur. So for today's video, we're just gonna cover a couple of exercises and things that you guys can actually can do to help yourself at home and release all of this. Now, it's gonna hurt a lot, fair warning. It is quite painful and some of the times you're gonna do it on yourself and you're not gonna wanna press as hard as you're gonna want to. You have to. It's You have to break out all that scar and scar tissue and adhesions that you've pretty much just accumulated for the past 
years you've been alive because you've never got taught of how important it is to have a splayed foot and be able to actually use the architecture in your foot from your arch, from your big toe, from everything like that. So get ready. So the first one is gonna be a light to myofascial release. Now that's just gonna get kind of like the base fascia that's surrounding the foot. A lot of chains cross there, your lateral chain, frontal, back, like all the lines, fascial lines come to the foot. So we're gonna to wanna to just do a general stretch. Right after that, we're gonna go into it with deep tissue. I suggest you put a little bit of cream, start lightly, and then slowly just massage the area a little bit more than the stretch. And then you're really gonna to have to dig in there with your thumbs and break that scar tissue up. As you see me doing, and this was the warning where I say it's gonna hurt a shit ton. Now, there are multiple tools that you can use, golf ball, lacrosse ball, to dig in that and just, you know, cry by yourself and drink some wine later if you need to, but you're gonna have to do it, so do that. Right after that, I use a scraping tool. There's a lot of companies that produce these. You honestly don't need to spend your money. I got mine for about 20 bucks. I love the multiple angles that it has on the tool so I can pretty much use it, utilize it on any part of the body. Another one that's out there and very popular is called a Sidekick. Now that is, is exceedingly expensive and you could use a spoon. Like in clinics, sometimes we use a spoon and we use the back of it. You need to come at a 45 degree angle and you're gonna feel these type of popcorn like sounds as you're scraping through, that's just all the adhesions that you have in that area. And you're gonna wanna break that apart. So dig in there, put a little bit of cream at a 45 degree angle. You don't have to jab it in there, but scrape that adhesions apart and allow more blood flow to get to the area. The next one is gonna be a simple calf stretch. It's great, the plantar fascia, like we said, has a lot of attachments and re releasing the calf is going to help with that pain. So we're gonna to wanna to release the calf. A normal calf stretch, you can either do it on the wall or you can either do it um, standing up on a block, like if you're on a step and do a calf stretch like that. Next one is we're gonna to wanna to strengthen the muscles in the plantar fascia. So not only is stability the key, but also we wanna to try to contract our foot and keep that arch support. So the first one is gonna be towel crunches. So you're gonna curl the towel on the floor close to you as much as possible. When you get to the end, you're gonna hold it, squeeze nice and tight, you're gonna lift up, hold for about five to 10 seconds, put it back down, and then we're gonna go the opposite way and try to open up our toes. And then we're gonna come back, curl them in, squeeze it up, put it back down, and repeat. Next one is gonna be a loaded arch. So pretty much what you're gonna be doing, you're gonna squat, you're gonna put your two feet, we're gonna make sure that we're not pronated, we have that nice arch support, we're gonna stand, and then we're gonna squat up. And you're gonna sit back down, make sure you have that arch board, and you're gonna come back up. I like doing this with a chair because it allows the person to kind of reset every time if they feel like they're doing it wrong, especially if it's their first time. If it's not and you feel more comfortable with that, stand up and just do normal squats with that arch support. Once that becomes a lot easier for you, you can do the single leg version. It's gonna be more challenging. I would start with the chair and then slowly gradual, gradually graduate from the chair and just do single legs. And then the last one that I like to do with this, since the plantar fascia and just the foot itself plays a lot with the big toe, I like practicing big toe extension with a yoga block and it's a great exercise just to allow more of a stretch to be felt on the plantar area of the foot and it's gonna allow that stretch and you're gonna feel it and it sucks and a lot of the times when you have plantar fascia from all those shoes you tend to have some sort of bunions so you're going to feel a really big stretch in your big toe and actually increasing the range of motion of that big toe extension is exactly what we want so it's kind of like a one-two combo great great and that's it that's pretty much simple things that you guys can do the general basic of this is to release the scar tissue and open up that area get the blood flow in and then do just do these simple exercises to strengthen the stability of that plantar fascia. That's what we want. So, if you have this, or you're wearing them tight ass shoes, like this, you gotta start taking care of yourself. You gotta start wearing other better shoes like I showed you guys. If you guys get a pair of these shoes and you walk in them for a couple of days, you're gonna feel a lot better. And if you add in all these exercises that we're doing for this cause, you're gonna feel even better. So don't forget, everything starts in the foot. Your foot is your foundation, just like anything else in life, a building, a house, the foundation is key and your feet are key. So take care of your feet, get the pain away, feel better, trust me, it's gonna help. I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any comments or any questions down below and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's your boy, that's Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee.